So thank you all so much. I know you all could be covering a lot of things. So excited that you all want to be here to cover Kentucky women's basketball. Um, and you will be glad you did after you watch us practice. So before I dive into uh, the season and the team and the vision of this program, I want to give a huge shout out to my coaching staff. I would not be able to do this job without them. Um, Naya Butts, Amber Smith, uh, Daniel, Denisha, we have all been in the trenches together and man, they have a passion and fire to help make sure that this program runs in championship mode. Um, and also welcome Coach Jen Hoover, who you all will meet soon. So uh, she has been a great addition to our staff, um, has head coaching experience, a knowledge, um, and also she brings a calmness to the staff. If you all have watched any games, um, myself, Coach Buds, Coach Amber, we're pretty high strong on the sidelines. So when we're at 10 or 20, I need somebody that's level two or three, and that would be Coach Jen's uh, job. But it's the people at Kentucky uh, that make this program special. So from the coaching staff, the support staff, everybody is all in. Our job is to make sure our players have the best experience um, athletically and academically. Um, if you've been following us this season, throughout the postseason, or yeah, throughout the postseason, you'll see our team looks a little bit different. Uh, 10 new players, and also we're carrying a roster of 15. I won't look down the bench and see two or three. We have a full roster um, of 15, um, five returners, um, Blair, Emma, Jada, Naya, and Robin. Um, that's a core veteran group that understand the expectation and standards of this program. Uh, four transfers, Maddie Shear, um, Addie, Anaya, and Asia, who all have veteran experience. They have college experience, and also they understand what it takes to be successful at this level. And then we have six rookies. They do not know what is going on <laughs> or what has hit them yet, but they are talented, and I love that they have uh, no back down in them. And I know a lot of people have been asking me, you have 10 new players, a whole new team. Well, we there is no gap in chemistry. And one thing we do not lack is personality. So you will uh, find that out soon. But our foundation is the same. It's rooted in our power five, um, family, hard work, discipline, accountability, and servant leadership. Our motto this year, built different, I'll give you a preview of my shirt here. So uh, built different. So whatever deficiencies uh, this team has, we've been talking all summer. We have to overcome it with a built different mentality. Uh, with that's a work ethic, um, a toughness, a willingness to do um, what others aren't willing to do when, and a competitive spirit. So just to give you an example of how competitive uh, this team is. So every day we have a built different challenge that you can win. Um, and if you win for the week, you're out of sprints. So everybody's trying to win, right? Uh, the very first day of practice, um, I had two people or three people almost injure themselves. So Mimi thought she was going to beat Robin in a sprint and they stand next to each other. Well, Mimi took the lead on her. Robin cut in front of her, they trip over each other and go head first into the treadmill. So I thought I was gonna lose two players right there. Um, Addie, who is super competitive, she thought she was gonna beat Jada Walker in a sprint. I don't know why she had that in her mind, but she uh, stretches out, tries to jump over the line, goes head first into the wall um, on her first day of practice. So luckily everybody's okay, but that is the competitive spirit. Um, also, they get plus five points on the win challenge uh, if they take a charge. I really um, want people taking charges. Well, Emma King took a charge in practice. The staff called it a block. I'm home watching film. I receive a text message about 11.15 p.m. It was Emma King. She said, Coach, I want you to review this call again and see if we can change it. Um, it was not a block. And I went back and watched practice and she sent me the clip when she takes the charge. I sent it back to the staff. I was like, guys, this is close. Do you think this was a charge? 
staff was like, no, coach, it was a block. So Emma was like, I do not agree. So I was like, fine, we will solve it. I sent the clip to Lisa Mattingly. I was like, is this a charge or a block? Because Emma King wants her five points. Um, Lisa Mattingly sends me a message back and she said, she is right, give her her five points. So Emma was very um, excited about that. Um, speaking of charges, Cass, she leads the team in charges. She's going to take them. And let me tell you, she has changed the way they viewed points uh, because the last two challenges she has won for taking charges in practice. So Robin comes up to me and says, I think you should give extra points for rebounding. I was like, you do? You get plus three if you win the rebounding. She goes, but the posts are taking all the rebounds. I said, well, either take a charge or get up more shots if you want to be cast. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but they do um, have a very competitive spirit. So we worked really hard this summer just to put their backs against the wall um, and to see what we were working with. Um, but off the court, uh, we did some fun things. We went to Kings Island. The staff rode all the roller coasters besides Coach Butts. She carried the bags. Um, but one important thing we did over the summer, um, and this was a proud moment as a coach, Blair Green called and said, Coach, is there anything we can do for the people in Eastern Kentucky? I want to go there and let's serve uh, the people, especially if it's, a, it's really important to me as a mountain girl. So we did that, and so it was good to represent the state of Kentucky um, that way. That said, I look forward to this season. It's our 49th. Um, and our goal is to compete for a championship. So excited about what the future holds uh, for this team. We'll open it up for questions. Oh, I did forget one thing before we open up for questions. I want to say shout out to Ryan Howard. What about uh, what she did in the WNBA? So uh, happy and proud of her and what she's done uh, being the WNBA Rookie of the Year. So shout out to Ryan Howard, a uh, Kentucky girl that is built different. Open it up for questions. Coach, you were just talking about Blair a little bit from a slow dropping standpoint, but how has her recovery been and what kind of asset has she been to this team at full health? So happy to have Blair Green back. She has worked extremely hard. We actually have to kick her out of the gym and we have to remind her an off day is actually an off day. Get out of the gym. Um, but she's worked extremely hard and she's a great asset to us. Um, her ability to shoot the basketball, um, I called her a sniper. This is how competitive they are. I called her a sniper in practice. Um, and another was like, how do we get that label? Well, I was like, shoot like Blair. Um, but her also, her veteran experience. I mean, she brings that to us. She understands what we need and want in this program. And she makes us different on the floor. Tara, what are your expectations for Maddie Shear? And what did it mean to the program to get a player of her resume back in the state? It was great to have Maddie Shear. Um, I remember receiving that phone call. She did make us sweat it out for a lot of days. Um, but to have her come back home, she understands what it means to put the jersey on. Um, but Maddie uh, brings a competitive spirit, but a high basketball IQ. Um, and I think the people of the state know what she can do and they look forward to uh, seeing her. But I'm counting on um, Maddie to be a leader uh, for this team. I was at the last year, Coach, so of you to rebuild this roster. Obviously, Ryan's success, but in the SEC Championship, I would think helped on the trail a little bit. Well, the SEC Championship did help. Um, you know, it brought exposure to this program, but it also showed the resiliency of this team, um, this staff, and what we can do when we put our mind um, together. And we're going to go off that momentum. Um, and I think our players are excited about uh, what this season holds. Coach, I know you said you've been asked this a lot this offseason, but I have to ask it again. With, okay. with 10 new players on the roster, obviously, how have you seen that chemistry work together so far this season? And, how do you sort of work on that process in these next couple of weeks to speed it up as much as you can before the game starts? Well, it's a work in progress, and we started, like I said, this summer laying the foundation of our defense and also, you know, putting their backs against the wall and having to compete um, in adverse situations, but also competition. When you have 15 of them on the floor, they all want to play, 
And I've said to them the whole time, there is one basketball, there's five positions, there's 40 minutes. Um, and you will earn it in practice. So everybody's trying to earn the right to play. Um, so I think that has uh, sparked our competitive spirit, but also it's just a process of working through. Our job and my job is to put five people on the floor um, that can help us win, uh, but a lot of meetings, a lot of role meetings. This is what your role will be. This is what we need from you, um, and being very honest and transparent with them of what we need to be successful. It's a we. Sometimes you, sometimes me, always we. Coach, Ron has uh, had that leadership role the past few years. Who have you seen that's kind of kind of stepped out and taken over that role to, to be the team leader and the one that people look to? You know, I've appointed Blair Green, uh, the leader of this team. She has been with us uh, the whole time. She understands um, what we are looking for, but she's the epitome of what I want every Kentucky Wildcat to be as far as her work ethic, how she approaches um, the game. But we also have a leadership council. Um, Naya has really stepped up, but Jada Walker has stepped up and has really found her voice. So we'll lead by committee. You mentioned Blair being the leader. It probably helps that her parents are coaches, so she kind of comes by it honestly, right? Yes, Blair, I think she learned a lot last year by sitting out. Um, it was a blessing in the sky, uh, disguise for her. Um, she was able to work with uh, Coach G doing scouting reports. Uh, she talked our team through personnel, but she also was able to see the game through a different lens. Um, so she's already tough. Um, now her mentality is that she just wants to win and she has a confidence um, in herself right now. Kyra, you kind of touched on the guard play a little bit. Just how is that this position taking shape? Because you kind of mentioned you've had a lot of new faces to this point. A lot of new faces. Um, you know, we have a gang of guards. They all bring something different, but what I like about this team, the versatility. Uh, we can play several different lineups. Um, Jada Walker can play the point, but also Sanaya, Maddie Shear. So the versatility um, that this team brings. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we talk about the non-negotiable is playing hard. That's the price of admission. Um, to even step on the floor. The difference be who can produce under pressure. That's who will play. The defensive intensity, how does it change with so many new <clears throat> Well, you know, last year we wanted to play up tempo and press a little more. And when we did um, press, it brought us success. We just couldn't sustain it, um, didn't have enough depth. But this year we have enough depth to do so. Um, Jada Walker was kind of our lone pickup um, last year. And let me tell you how excited she gets when I can call three other people in practice to actually do the job. Um, but I think we'll be able to extend our defense even more and have the depth to do it for longer. Tyler, what are your expectations for Naya Russell, who I know was a player you recruited out of high school? And you got her the second time around. We did get her the second time around. But you know, Anaya Russell is talented. Um, she brings, she's gifted offensively, uh, just trying to get her up to speed uh, defensively, but her athleticism um, is nice to have on the floor. But she's a guard that can create her own shot, but she can also create for others. Um, but competition, uh, Anaya is someone that we recruited, but no one's just gonna be like, move over Anaya, this is your position. They're all fighting uh, for that guard spot. Coach, obviously the news of Tiana Herring was pretty shocking to everybody. How's the team handling that moving forward? And um, I guess, do you have any updates on her situation? Yeah, it was unfortunate news um, that we received about um, Tiana, but I will say she's very resilient. Um, she has a toughness about her. Um, her approach going into surgery, she was like, coach, this is what I have to do, and then I'm gonna get back on the floor. Um, but she's back with us, so glad to have her back in Lexington. And you know, we just take it in stride. It's day by day. Uh, we have committed as a staff and a team to continue to encourage her, uplift her, um, and keep her engaged as she's trying to get back on the basketball floor. And as far as an update, it's day, day to day. What should we expect out of a sophomore, Jada Walker? The same that you uh, saw as a freshman. She still has that toughness about her, the defensive intensity, the competitive spirit, but I also think, 
you know, she was baptized by fire a year ago. So she learned a lot um, and through playing experience and there's nothing like having experience until you have some. Um, but I think she's playing with so much more confidence because she actually understand, understands what's happening. A year ago, she did all of that, not really understanding our system. So imagine what she can be now that she understands. I know, we do have a lot of Kentucky girls, right? Um, which is good. Um, you know, we want to make sure as the flagship school that we bring in the top Kentucky kids um, and having uh, these players here, they understand what it means. They are born and raised. They have Kentucky uh, blue blood in them. Um, so I just think they have a different passion and understanding. Coach, you mentioned confidence there a couple questions ago. How do you think winning the SEC championship last year kind of raised some of those returners' confidence, and has it showed up in their play? Absolutely. Well, you know, we went through um, a lot of ups and downs last year, um, and for them to be able to play through it um, and see at the end hard work, resiliency, toughness, it can pay off, and I mean, what a magical run that we had, and it paid off uh, by winning an SEC championship, but I think that gave them confidence that if we stick together as a team, follow the blueprints, uh, be coachable, that we have an opportunity to do great things together. What kind of role do you see it being for Cassidy this season? You know, Cassidy is a tough player. Um, she takes charges. She is what I want Kentucky players to do, get on the court. She has a grittiness and a toughness, um, but she has a high basketball IQ. But at the end of the day, a freshman point guard, it's just tough. It is a process. And you know, I just challenge her, trust the process, learn from the veterans, um, and be prepared when your numbers call. Kyra, on the note about the SEC tournament win, the teams you had to beat to achieve that, the South Carolinas of the world, the Tennessees, what becomes the key now to closing that gap in the regular season and competing against those programs consistently during league play? Um, you know, one, you have to stay healthy. Um, two, everybody has to buy into their roles um, because everybody's going to have a different role. We're going to need everyone. And, um, you know, we talk about the three Ps, peers, parents, press. Nobody gets in this room besides us, and we have to um, – lay everything else aside to make sure that it is us together and competing as one. Um, and I think that's how we close the gap. And then just our, our style of play, um, being able to do it consistently. Kyra, Ryan was such a, such a scorer, such a dependable scorer. And, and obviously, you don't have somebody proven at this level doing that. But how different do you think you'll look offensively? And, and what have you seen maybe from some of your, your players? I mean, Ryan Howard is tough to replace, um, obviously, but like all programs that have um, a player of her caliber, you know, you have to learn to move on. I mean, I wish we could have her forever, um, but she has bigger and better things to achieve. Um, but you know, this year it's um, more about players making plays. So we did have a Ron Howard, but collectively, we're not asking Blair Green to be a Ron Howard or a Jada Walker, everybody being their best offensively. Um, and it's our job as a staff to make sure that we're putting players in position to score. Um, you know, we need a big three to step up and um, it might be the same three every game. It might be a different three. Um, I think we'll be a work in progress offensively. Kyra, the post play is sort of a blank slate. Is there anybody who's sort of you know, stepping up or you know, sort of coming to the forefront there? Well, I think Nia Leveretta gained a lot of confidence um, last year as we threw her in uh, late in the season and asked her not only to play but to produce. Um, so I think she's playing with a lot of confidence. Um, then you add um, uh, Addie, who has college experience, um, she brings the energy that we need, um, to her ability to rebound the basketball and defend. Um, and then Asia Petty, um, even though she's a work in progress, 
She is what we have been missing um, at Kentucky. She's a, a big post that's physical and that can score down low, but she can move like a guard. So, um, you know, I feel like we'll be able to score inside, but when you think about our offense, we want to play fast um, and up-tempo. Yeah. I'm trying not to remember that we had six. Um, <laughs> but I think in order to play the style that we want to play up-tempo, offensively, um, pressing, you have to have a bench um, to go to. And, you know, obviously I hope we stay healthy all year, but being able to have options um, is helpful. But it also helps in practice. You know, I thought last year we weren't as consistent as we needed to be but we also were so down in numbers that we didn't get to practice like we needed to. When you went and recruited these players for Maddie, for example, for a second time, is it the same pitch that you make to them the second time or is it different? Is it the same person recruiting or is it different? Or what was different about this time around? Well, I think the relationships are the same. Um, once you recruited them once, you have the relationship. So I think the foundation was laid, um, but Maddie in particular, I was like, listen, the people of the state of Kentucky want to see you at Kentucky wearing blue. Um, I don't know what we need to do, but we are going to make it happen this time. You said no the first time, but the second time, we are going to get a yes. Um, but I think um, it was the relationship um, at the end of the day. She came on campus, it felt like family. Um, I told her if I had a quarter for everyone that asked me if we were going to get Maddie Shear, I would be rich. Um, but I think she understands the responsibility and she's excited uh, to be back and playing in her home state. Coach, of, of the 10 newcomers, is there anyone that's maybe better than you thought when you were recruiting them or watching tape or anything? Well, they're all very talented. Um, you know, I think they bring uh, different things. I could go down the list, uh, but one that just stands out, and you all will love her, is Addie. Her competitive spirit, um, her ability to play with an intensity on both uh, sides of the ball. Um, she talks nonstop. Um, but the funny thing about Addie, I'm telling you about her competitive spirit, going back to the win challenge. Uh, I see her at the training table yesterday and she said, Coach, I'm going to go back and watch practice. I think they missed my rebounds at the table. I should have won some of those. So her competitive spirit, but also she brings a leadership to us. Um, she's not afraid to say the tough things. And I think that was one thing that we were missing in our leadership that she will bring. Coach, with all the young players I see your roster this year, how has that affected your style of coaching and or coaching? Patience, you guys pray for me, but they have been a lot of fun. Um, but you know, you know, it's a change from the last two years uh, where we had veterans that we could get through a practice plan very fast. So for example, when you have six rookies, uh, yesterday it took me 10 minutes to get through two plays. So to give you an example, last year, we could probably get through 10 plays in five minutes. So just the patience of giving them the reps that they need to be successful, and it's just the time. Um, and they will get it, they have a willingness to learn, um, and they're super excited about being here, so they're gonna give their all. You talked about how the SEC Championship impacted the players' confidence. What about yours? You know, um, yeah, it's changed me. I think it uh, was confirmation. You know, it was a rough, a rough go at the beginning of last year um, and I was confident in the decisions that I had to make and they were tough decisions um, as you move over and you don't want to have to make them um, but sometimes during those tough times you do second guess yourself um, but I've said it before this administration is unbelievable but I did receive a call it was probably after our fourth or fifth loss um, and it was about 11 o'clock at night, and it was Mr. Barnhart, so I was like, eh, this can't be good. <laughs> um, but you know, he just said, you know, you are my coach, I'm confident in you, and we're building this to last. No quick fixes. 
And you know, that really uh, gave me a lot of comfort and confidence in what I was doing. Um, and to have him behind me meant a lot, along with this administration. Um, and you know, it just reassures you that you are doing the right thing, even when it will go astray, it'll go astray again this year. Um, but just stay on path and stay focused and confident in what you're doing. Coach, last year you guys kind of took the infamous Fort Campbell trip, and this summer you guys did more things like that with boxing lessons and uh, Kings Island. What's kind of the thought process from the coaching staff behind taking those kind of out of the ordinary trips? Well, you know, last year was a bit different because we had been together. It was more of a toughness. We needed the toughness um, and be in the trenches with each other. Uh, this year, it actually was a totally different approach because we had 10 new that you're trying to blend with the five uh, returners. Uh, so this year was a mix of toughness and get to know uh, because it's hard to trust somebody and be in the trenches when you don't know them. So we did a lot of get to know activities of painting, um, a lot of team meetings of, um, you know, this is who I am and this is what I need to be successful. But one thing you're gonna find out about this team, so a year ago, I kinda had to wait with the awkward silence when I asked a question. Um, this year, I have to be like, okay, everybody calm down, not everybody at once. So I think their personality um, is different. So having a mix of fun, um, because we want it to be tough and hard work, but it's also fun um, and you can't leave that part out. A lot of your players have been taking advantage of NIL. Just what do you think that's been, or has it been beneficial for your program, or how do you think it maybe keeps players around and helps with recruiting as well? Well, it does help with recruiting. Um, so the name image likeness is uh, very uh, prevalent in our game right now. And luckily for us, we are blessed with an unbelievable brand um, that BBN brings. Um, and our players, I love it. Uh, they are uh, very empowered right now. They're not afraid to use their voice. They love money. Um, and so they don't mind going out to get their own deals. Um, we went to an event um, to open up the Sports Academy um, last week, just to show you an example. So Blair comes up to me and says, who's in charge of this event? So I was like, you know, here's some different people. I said, you know, why do you need to know? She said, I'm gonna to talk to them about hiring me so I can make some extra money. So they love making money, but, but it also helps prepare them for life after here, that they're doing business deals, they have to conduct themselves in such a way to get certain brands. But the bottom line, no matter what happens in the name, image, likeness, we talk about if we produce and we win, everybody wins. So everybody will get what they want if we do what we're supposed to do as a team. How you talk about some of these recruiting advantages? Does it help you on the trail to say, we had the WNBA rookie of the year here? It does. <laughs> uh, it does help. Um, everybody loves Ryan Howard. Uh, so we had a lot of momentum going into recruiting uh, with Ryan, Ryan Howard being the number one draft pick. But it also helped uh, carrying an SEC championship trophy in the, to the houses, along with the nets and the jerseys that we wore. But I think it was the exposure. Um, that that team brought. Um, but that's the momentum that you need and that we need to uh, continue in recruiting. Winning, we, we need to win. That helps in recruiting, period.